Charles Skaggs, aka Two Code Scorpio. Two Code Scorpio does not get nearly enough credit for being one of the more innovative high flyers of the 1990s. We always hear about Shawn Michaels, the Hardys, Rob Van Dam, and even Sabu, but Two Code Scorpio was just as smooth and just as cool as those guys in the ring. He is decorated champion across multiple promotions, including a tag title reign in WCW, a tag title reign in ECW, and is a record four-time ECW World Television Champion. He didn't quite get to that level in the WWF. He was only Flash Funk and then a member of the Job Squad later on, but he is still one of the more underappreciated and great wrestlers of the decade. I would highly suggest checking out his match with Rob Van Dam. It is an excellent showcase of their abilities, and he's still going really strong to date. Doesn't seem to have slowed down at all with age. Two Code Scorpio, a fantastic way to kick off Black History Month and my celebration of underappreciated black wrestlers. Peace. Continuing my celebration of underappreciated black wrestlers, today we have Carlene Moore Big Nod, aka Jazz. Jazz began her career in the late 90s in ECW before moving on to the WWE during the latter days of the invasion. She would become a two-time WWE Women's Champion, defending the title at WrestleMania 18 and then competing for it again at WrestleMania 19, having really good matches with the likes of Trish Stratus, Lita, Victoria, Gail Kim, and a whole bunch of others. Lots of women get credited as anti-diva in the WWE like AJ Lee and Paige, but Jazz, she really did... She personified that before any of those women. Jazz would then move on a little bit later on in her career to become a record-setting 900-day title holder for the NWA Women's Championship. And a few years ago, she had her retirement tour in Impact Wrestling, teaming up with Jordan Grace and then having her final match against Deanna Perazzo for the Impact Women's Championship. She has had a tremendous career and definitely deserves a spot in the WWE Hall of Fame. Continuing my look back at underappreciated black wrestlers, today we have Nelson Frazier Jr., a.k.a. Mabel, a.k.a. Viscera. Arriving in the WWF as one half of men on a mission with his partner Mo, they would actually go on to become the second ever black tag team champions in the history of the WWF. His greatest success came in 1995 when he won the King of the Ring tournament and main event at SummerSlam against champion Diesel. Although he is one of the less fondly remembered kings of the ring, it is important to celebrate all aspects of black wrestling and the men and women who have contributed. No matter what, they are still our brothers, they are still our sisters. Sadly, nine years ago today, Nelson Frazier Jr. joined the Ancestors. Rest in peace, brother, and I appreciate you for both the Attitude Era and New Generation memories you created. Peace. Continuing my celebration of black wrestlers, today I have Jackie Moore. Jacqueline began her career back in 1988 in the World Class Championship Wrestling before making her way to the USWA where she became a 14-time women's champion. Stops in Smoky Mountain Wrestling and WCW led her to the World Wrestling Federation where she would become a two-time WWF Women's Champion as well as a Cruiserweight Champion later on in her career. In 2007, she moved on to TNA where she became a manager, particularly with uh, the Cowboy James Storm, as well as an occasional wrestler. She took her rightful place in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2016 and has made a few appearances since then, particularly in the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. Jacqueline is a pioneer and an icon, the first ever black women's champion in the WWF's history. Salute to Jacqueline. Happy Black History Month. Peace. Wrapping up my celebration of black wrestlers, we have A.C. Connor, a.k.a. D'Lo Brown. Beginning his career in his native New Jersey and making his way over to Smoky Mountain Wrestling, D'Lo Brown wrestled for the WWF from 1997 until 2003. He was a founding and pivotal member of the Nation of Domination stable, winning four European championships and an Intercontinental Championship during his time in the WWE, becoming the first Eurocontinental Champion. D'Lo was one of the best mid-card acts of the WWE in a time when wrestling was not a high priority. He would move on to TNA in 2003 and picked up an NWA World Tag Title run and also had stops in Pro Wrestling Noah. D'Lo Brown is most definitely deserving of a spot in the WWE Hall of Fame for his exploits during the Attitude Era. He's beloved and one of my absolute favorites. Thank you for celebrating Black History Month with me. Catch y'all next year. Peace.